that you'll be able to see my presentation. Yes, it's yeah. good. Good. Thank Thank you. So what I'm going to talk about today is something that we call my pages, which is directly translated from uh, the Swedish words mina sidor. Uh, so what is it? You might ask. Uh, and what it is, it's a website with free e-services that the Swedish Forest Agency uh, offers forest owners. Uh, and the target user group for this uh, website are private forest owners, uh, where the majority have between one and ten forest properties. And this is a target group that don't have access to their own uh, geodata systems, so that we provide a, a service for them for free. And the purpose is to, in a simple and efficient way, inspire and empower forest owners to make informed decisions about their forest property. So we provide maps, uh, a possibility to report or apply for permission of clear felling, uh, a compilation of information from different government agencies of things regarding the forest property, among other things. Um, and who can as access my pages? To be able to sign in, you need an e-electronic identification and a Swedish social security number. So we do have uh, foreign forest owners who are not currently able to to access my pages. So you need a Swedish social social security number. Uh, but if you are a forest owner, you can grant access to another person of the choosing. So uh, if you have a forest company representative, a relative such as a child, but if you are transitioning the ownership, or a friend, or uh, someone else, you can uh, give them permission and then they can handle their property in my pages instead for the actual forest owner. This is a method that also works for uh, larger estates where this forest is owned not by a uh, private person but in a company. Uh, municipalities uh, use my pages. We can also see uh, some uh, other cooperation of forest owners, such as the Swedish Church who uses my pages for, for uh, applying for permits, for example. So we have about 40,000 users. They increase every day uh, because this is quite a new version. Um, and together you handle about 80,000 uh, properties in total. And half of our users handle only one property, while 90% of our users handle less than 10 properties. So we can actually see here that we've managed to reach our target group pretty well with the between one and 10 uh, properties. Um, and most users handle their own properties. Uh, only about 2% of our users act as an agent on behalf of uh, property owners. So most of them handle uh, the force on their own. 80% of the users are men so far, and this is we want to increase the number of female users uh, for my pages because uh, we have about 39% uh, female forest owners in Sweden. So we need to bring the number of Swedish for forest owner users up to be more representative of uh, the actual forest owner ratio uh, there. And that's something that we're going to start looking at. What can we do to uh, increase the number of uh, women users? And we have about 2000 unique visitors daily. And of those 2000 users, about 50 of those are new users every day. So since this, um, this version, of my pages is quite newly re released. We see uh, a decent increase of users every day. Uh, so about 15 users uses every day. Uh, if you're interested, the total number of forest owners in Sweden about uh, 311,000 people. So this version that we have built that was released in December 2021. 
uh, has a strong focus on user experience. We've really worked on improving user experience uh, and tested different versions on, on actual forest owners and try to really improve uh, accessibility and and the ease of use. So it's, it's, a, it's a service that's supposed to be easy to use, even though you're not that used to forest, forestry, looking at maps, that kind of stuff. Um, and it works the same way, even if you're on computer or mobile phone or tablet, it, it looks the same. We had our old version that closed in September 2022. Uh, so there was a period of time where we had both the new version and the old version released. So there was a transition period. Uh, and that's also why we're um, expecting quite a few more users uh, to come into the new My Pages in the future. Uh, because everyone hasn't mentally made this transition yet from the old version to the new year version. And in the Swedish Forest Agency, we work with three different levels of shared information. And there, and there are three different levels in my pages as well. The first level is data shared between owners of the same property and their agents. So that we're speaking uh, drafts, notes, uh, plans that they made in my pages, uh, and it's sto stored in their own personal space. So it's only the owners and an agent that they, give them, that, that they have given permission that can uh, access this data. The, the Swedish Forest Agency can't see it, no one else can see it unless they choose to share it. And that brings me to, to the second level, which is data shared by forest owners and the forest agency. And that's legal matters, data related forest properties, uh, you know, when they send in uh, a um, notification of felling or an application of felling, uh, it goes from being their own draft to being data shared by forest owners and the forest agency. So that's the second level. And then the third level are the open map services that's available to anyone. And that we show in our maps in my pages, which, we'll, which we will look at in a little bit. And it's also available in our open map services because we have an open map service that's that don't don't require a login and it's accessible even if you're not a forest owner. Uh, and that can include different forest data, areas with high nature value, uh, plant clear fellings, uh, nature conserve areas, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, Forex, we deal with giving advice to forest owners, and uh, I work a lot with advisory services. So, how does my pages provide forest owners with advice? How can we use my pages to give good advice to forest owners? Well, the first thing is what's built now in the e service. We provide them with maps forest data, information about nature conservation objects and cultural heritage sites. So we give them information that empowers them to make informed decisions. Because to, to know what you're going to do, you need all the available data so you can make a good informed decision. So we provide them that data for free in an accessible way. The second thing is that forest owner can Forest owners can book a digital meeting with a consultant at the Swedish Forest Agency uh, and get individual remote counseling. So we don't meet out in the forest, we can meet uh, at a computer screen and look at the forest together in the maps, uh, in the different services by sharing the screen. And we can talk about uh, different suitable forest management, all kind of different things just by looking at the maps. This is especially good if you're a forest owner who doesn't live close to your property, which is more and more common here in Sweden. And lastly, it's something that we're currently building right now. And it's something that we're calling my forest management plan. 
and it's a new service within my pages that will provide our users with automatically generated forest management recommendations based on owner specific goals. So the owners answer a range of questions that specify what kind of uh, goal they have with their forestry, if there it's uh, more interested in uh, biodiversity or if it's uh, timber production, for example, uh, and then we compile that with uh, um, forest stand input data and hopefully we will generate a, a good recommendation of forest management. Uh, and that's something that we're really looking forward to and hope will turn out well. We're currently building it, so I, unfortunately I would not have to show you. I don't have anything to show you in regards to that, but um, it's really exciting for us. So lastly, I thought I'd show you a bit of the service itself. Now it's all in Swedish. Uh, so I won't go in into detail about each service and show you everything it contains or anything, but uh, to give you an over overview of what we're offering, and I will trans try to translate as best as I can. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go over here. So now we're inside the demo version my pages. So we this is the start page and we get the hello, hey, welcome to my pages. What do you want to do today? And to answer that question, we have a range of options here. We can explore in the map. We can watch my forest data. Uh, I can uh, cut down normal forest, cut down broadleaf forest cut down mountainous forests because there are different regulations for different kinds of forests here in Sweden. I can uh, protect forests, so I can uh, report a, a forest stand and say, oh, hey, I'm interested in giving up this area for con conservation. And the last service we have here currently is um, um, sending sending a notification about uh, um, of an action that's regulated in the Environment Act, which is a different set of laws other than uh, the rest of the services. Uh, and if I scroll a little bit down here, I can see uh, a list of all the different um, uh, applications and notifications that I have sent into the Forest Agency. So here I've I can see here I applied for uh, a monetary grant, uh, which is currently uh, under overview. Uh, and uh, here I've handed in notice of felling. So, so we can go in here and see uh, different uh, applications and notifications and lists of that. And I can also see uh, stuff that I started doing. I've started on a notification of felling, but I I had to take a break, so I saved it so I can go back into it later and keep keep working on it. So just to give you an idea of how it looks inside one of these uh, services, we can look at uh, cutting down normal forest, forest clear cut. Uh, so we can start that service and I start by choosing a property. Here. And I draw the area that I want to. Want to clear cut. Right here. Triangle nice. And I move forward and then I go through step by step all the different things that you need to do in a forest, um, a notification uh, of, of clear cutting. And I end it by uh, sending in it, sending it in to, to the forest agency. So it can all be handled digitally by the forest owner. 
yes, I want to leave. OK, so. One last thing that we can look at a little closer is the map service that we have built in in my pages and you saw a little bit of it when I drew the in the, in the map which I was going to clear cut. So we'll choose the same property here. Uh, so here we have it. Uh, and as I said, this works the same whether on your cell phone or your computer. So you can take this on your cell phone out in the forest and look at the map while you're actually standing in the forest. So it has a built in GPS system as well. So uh, here I have the basic map. I can switch between aerial photos, uh, color or infrared. Uh, we have some historic maps which are not available for this area of Sweden, but if you if you're further south, you have some historic maps to choose from. Uh, satellite images. Which are taken almost daily. Uh, see if I have something. Ah, it's too cloudy. Uh, there we have a satellite image. Uh, and we have this terrain map as well, so you can see uh, what the terrain looks like. Uh, we, we take a, an aerial photo as a background, and I can look at different uh, clear cuts that I've done that I've sent in. It's the same as the list that we looked at earlier. Um, I can look at uh, high risk of spruce beetle. The darker the red, the more risky it is for uh, spruce beetle attacks. Uh, sorry, I can uh, see if there are any uh, uh, areas with high nature value that are registered. So we can look at this area. So we can see here we have a uh, formally protected area of the forest here, which overlaps quite well with the spruce uh, bark beetle uh, high risk. Which isn't unusual. Uh, and something else that's quite interesting is the. Uh, forest data based on laser scanning that is done. So we can look at. Uh, volume for example, so we have a cubic meter forest uh, per hectare here. The darker the green, the more volume there is. So here you can see as well, for example, that in the protected area here, we have a lot of volume standing. So if I'm if I am a forest owner and is interested in knowing, OK, what's in an area here in my on my property, I can use this magnifying glass and get information about an area here. So I can draw an area. And get a list of different hits. Uh, so for example, I get a hit here that we have high risk of uh, the spruce bark beetle. Uh, and I can I see here that we have a a protected area in a biotope, protected biotope. Uh, I can also hit, get a hit here on a list of re registered species, which is quite useful now because of the uh, EU regulation concerning species conservation and forestry. Uh, so I can see here what kind of species are registered on in this area. So that's some of the things that's useful for forest forest owner to know and i thought i'd end there my presentation and uh, see if there's any questions okay thank you very much lisa for this very interesting uh, presentation i have to say that as a representative of forest owners in southern southern europe uh, i find it really Interesting to have this kind of applications that, as you said, uh, empower forest owners to make uh, informed decisions, which is very important, given the fact that, uh, as you said already, too, 
we have more and more urban forest owners that are far away from their forest properties. So I think this is a really interesting tool that could help forest owners to make informed decisions. Uh, uh, while people uh, react and raise their hands, I would start maybe with a question. So I, get, I, have, I kind of give uh, time to people to, to raise their hands. Uh, I, I see that this application needs a lot of cooperation from the governments and the government agencies to feed the, all the information and all that because you, you are based on the on the on this information. So I would like to see to know if, if it was easy to cooperate and to get the links to the information you you need to feed the application and how, how was that collaboration with the government is easy is not thinking about uh, if we could use these kind of apps in other countries and. And well, at the same time, ask you that I see. I think it's in Swedish only. Uh, would it be easy to pass it to other countries and translate it to other um, languages? And just to see how that collaboration would be in case we need to well work on it in other countries. Uh, I would say it is quite easy because we have a good cooperation and trans transferring of data. And actually, uh, some of the data shown here in one of the services that I didn't show you. Uh, comes from the tax agency and we provide data to the tra tax agency that they use in in uh, the in cal in calculating uh, taxes for forest properties so and that in seal turn we imp import back the data so, so we have a good collaboration with different agencies um, already that's been in place for years so it's not something that we had to establish just for when we built this, uh, but it was already in place. Uh, a lot of things, yeah. Uh, well, I can see there's a race hand there, Nula. Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lisa, thanks very much for that. Very, very interesting. Um, I have two questions. Um, one is, do owners themselves submit the applications for licensing or is this something that um, an agent does on their behalf? I mean, here in Ireland, no owner with the regulations that are in place now, it's very complicated and no, I don't think any owner can really submit any kind of substantial application themselves anyway. So that's question number one. And then a slightly, maybe just a kind of a technical one there. On, on the um, platform you showed us, um, where the images were taken by the satellite on a daily basis. Could this image be used? Can you track back the images to see progress, for example, in a harvest? And is it used for that purpose? So thanks. Uh, first question. Um, um, yes, absolutely forest owners can hand in their own applications. And it's not uncommon. It's more common for them to hire a company and the company does the application for them, but they absolutely can do it by themselves as well. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. Uh, second question, yes, you can absolutely follow the progress of uh, of a clear cut, for example, and, and we're working with uh, controlling to, to see that they're following the law. We can go in and check, OK, what's the progress here? Have they and compare it to the area that they uh, reported that they want to clear cut and we can go in and check, OK, is this uh, the same or not? And we also use satellite data yearly to to look at um, permits that have been given out and compare it to areas that have been clear cut and see if there's any areas that have been clear cut that have not received a permit or sent in a notification. So we kind of try to uh, find legal clear cuts that way. We can definitely, and I have personally myself used it to see, okay, is this area cut started? Have they started cutting it yet or not? How far have they gone? Yeah. But we only get satellite images uh, during the spring, summer, and fall, not during the winter. I don't see any. Uh, Mina, is there any other raised hand or? Oh, yeah, Mark. Hi, Lira, thank you. And, and Lisa, thank you. It's quite an amazing system. I think there's probably quite a lot of jealousy around Europe at the moment. Um, I can see real benefits from it. But um, can you tell us how it was developed? Was it developed in house or did you use contractors? And um, some idea of the cost, maybe? Yeah. 
I, I don't know the cost. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't <laughs> involved in that. Uh, it was. We've had a, some version of my pages for quite a long time since the 90s. Uh, so this is a, a new version of something that we've already had. It's been mostly developed in house, but we have used contractors as well uh, to bring in uh, some extra people that we don't have in house. But but the majority is done in house. It's not like we said build the mat service and we hired a company to build it for us. So we we build it ourselves with some help of contractors. Yeah. And and also in, when someone applies for felling. Mm -hmm. um, when they've completed the felling, do they have to report they've done it? Or no. 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 So you, they you, don't you have to. Tell from the satellite data, probably. Yeah, they have. Uh, when they hand in, uh, there are two different versions here in Sweden. One is when you cut down what we call normal forest, then you hand in a notification. So you tell us that you're going to do a felling. You don't have to receive a yes or no. So if you don't hear anything in six weeks, you're good to go. And that uh, is uh, active for five years. So you can do your clear cut anytime during those five years. And you don't have to notify us when you're done. We, we pick it up through uh, satellite analysis. Um, if, you're, uh, do we give, if you're applying for permit in mountainous forest or in broadleaf forest, you need to get a yes or no before you can start. But then it's the same. It's... Uh, five years and you don't have to report that you're done or anything. And, and how does the forest agency check whether the trees have been or whether there's restocking taking place? Uh, re replanting or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. regrowth. Um, we uh, do uh, field work to gather statistics on how it looks uh, and combined with that we also do uh, we send out letters and ask, have you done it or not? And when they reply no, we visit some of them and we can uh, write that they have to uh, do uh, replanting or something else to get a regrowth or they will get a fine. Yeah. Okay. But what we don't you. cover, we don't do it for every every permit or every notification. It's It's a sample of them and it's not a really big issue. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from Andrew Bell. Please, Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I, I agree with Mark. It is a fantastic system you've got there and uh, very envious. So there was one, one technical question, then one, kind yeah. of one, one more general question. So the technical question is, I know you've been having a system for a long time to be able to track um, felling using satellite technology. So are you using kind of visible spectrum, i.e. aerial imagery or um, satellite photographs to track that? Or are you using um, synthetic aperture radar now? Which? I don't know. <laughs> I don't right. know. That is, okay. that is beyond that was, my That was the techie question, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've been trying something with synthetic aperture, which, um, you know, the, the Sentinel satellite comes over every six days. Yeah. So it is possible to pick up on radar, which it doesn't, it can, see through clouds so it picks up by radar if there's um any change in the canopy cover okay so, uh, no but I, it, but it I, is a bit techy, so. I don't think we do that because we only do it once a year that uh, okay. sort of analysis if it's been cut out or not yeah yeah uh, but okay. but we have this sort of almost daily satellite data where you can go in and look yeah but it's not that we, we don't do as it is an as analysis regularly yet yeah. at least I don't know, Ulf. Do you know anything that's going on there? I have my colleague here in the audience. Oh yes. Uh, uh, hello. No, I don't know that uh, either. Uh, I don't think we use the 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 more advanced. Just like Lisa said, we do it once a year. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it. So my general question is: so you've, you've got a really excellent system. How would you improve it if you had a magic wand? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is. The, my forest plan, this new service that we're building that's going to be in this with, with the planning system, I really have high hope for that. And oh. there's a lot of things I would like to put in there, uh, which we can't do yet. Uh, we have to start with sort of a bare bones service and we can add on 
eventually. I mean, we have uh, sort of carbon storage and the climate aspects, aspects that we're not quite there yet to build, but that's something that I would like to look at in the future, for example. Mm. Uh, that kind of uh, bioeconomics carbon uh, angle would be really nice, but so, as I said, we're not quite there yet. Okay, well, room, room to develop it. That's yeah. good. Thank you. Maybe I could fill in yeah. a little bit there. We we also want to develop this uh, advisory services, like when you're when you're using uh, satellite data or, or uh, aerial photos to track uh, areas with high, high nature value. You also can can get advice how to manage. Uh, what is the best to uh, do something, some mm. kind of management or just leave it for free development. And uh, if you're planning a clear cut close to a river, you get advice. This is the way you you, you should uh, do the uh, clear cut and leave some uh, protection zone close to the water and, and build mm. in that kind of advice into the system. Mm. Yeah. And then there's also something really exciting with uh, artificial intelligence that is happening right now. I was in a meeting yesterday where they are developing a system for identifying spruces, spruces uh, forests that are currently under the bark beetle, spruce bark mm -hmm. beetle attack. They identify where the trees have started to die uh, and then we can um, give advice to the forest owner. The here in this area, it's a high likelihood of you having an uh, uh, ongoing uh, attack of uh, spruce bark beetles, so you need to do something here, probably. Mm. And to to keep working with artificial intelligence, and we also use it for identifying uh, cultural remains and uh, different kinds of things. That's that's something that is really exciting right now, and we're mm. looking at how can we use that in my pages and con combine it with uh, advisory services. How do mm. we advise mm. forest owners? with the data that we get from artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's great, thank you very much. OK, thank you, Lisa. We have another two questions. Uh, the first one is from Amy Ari. Sorry if I don't pronounce well the names. Because <laughs> that was very well done. Ari, the first name, <laughs> I don't have to confirm. Yeah, hello, everyone. Good to see you. And hello, Lisa. Thanks very much for your wonderful presentation. Um, as you know yourself, we have this Minskook, my forest program in Finland, which has very many similarities with your Mina Seed or my pages. A uh, couple of questions. How how do you update the your, the forest data which is which is available through the program? How and how often and how do you do it? Which kind of uh, methods do you have? And the second question is that uh, you say there were the three levels for using the the data, mm. uh, and the forest owner has to sign into the system with his or her her, her personal details. Is the data openly available in public without the forest owner's details? For example, are the notifications, active uh, forest harvesting notifications, available for publicly? And we uh, have very, by the way, we have very much similar kind of system. The notification is given and that's, we have 10 days time yeah. to react and then it's valid for three years. Yeah, Thanks so so I'll take the last question first. And yes, it is open to everyone without personal details. Uh, it's that's basically fine. just the outline of the area. And uh, I think it's when it was handed in to us. Uh, so no, no personal details or no, mm -hmm. no uh, big details in any way about it. It's more of a polygon. So you can see this area has been, uh, they have sent in a notification. But it's not possible to connect it to a forest owner unless you use some other forest to, uh, um, service to see, OK, who owns this property? Yeah. Could could I fill in some a little bit there? Yeah. Uh, that has been a big debate around uh, concerning that for a couple of years ago when we started to to uh, 
make this uh, available to everyone, the, the notifications, because the fo forest owners associations, they didn't like that. They, their opinion is that this, this is company secrets. But uh, we had a, a, a trial concerning that and, and we won, so it's official, still official. Yeah. And then uh, first question, forest data, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so the forest data, data that we're showing is based on laser scanning. And it's, uh, they fly over the entire country and scan it by laser. And it's a process that, that takes several years. So we're currently in the uh, second time around, so to say. So it's, it's uh, somewhere between seven and eight years between updates. Uh, but we hopefully get better metadata and everyone sees uh, that it's very useful for a lot of things. Uh, so I really hope we'll get a third time around and so on. And the more input data we get, the more we can also model how the forest grows uh, as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, was it was it anything more that I that you asked about that I missed? I think that was it. But do you yeah. do you do you grow the forest between the laser scannings during it, the it, six it, years or seven yeah. years? Yeah, the data that that shows here in my pages is for the year it was laser scanned, but it's also built in a calculator that the landowner can do it themselves, that where they can uh, count up to the current date uh, how much the forest has grown. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Now the next will be Benjamin Chapelet, our French colleague. The floor is yours, yes. Benjamin. Hi. Hi. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you, Lisa, for your presentation and uh, uh, this uh, very interesting um, uh, platform. Uh, my question is uh, more about the general statistics, and uh, if I get it right, uh, you said like you have like 40,000 users uh, out of uh, 300,000 Forest yep. owners, right? So that that means like uh, more than ten percent of uh, users uh, of forest owners are using this platform, right? Yeah, it, it's a, and, it's a good and, ratio. Uh, I, I don't have any comparison, but uh, uh, from my point of view, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, and we had more users in the old old system, so we're expecting and we see a daily increase of okay. new users. So. Uh, there will be more <laughs> if I return okay. next year okay. and, and show you some numbers. We will have more users. Uh, and could, could well. you remind us um, how long has it been working, this platform? Uh, we released this in September 2021 and closed down the old one in December 2022. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's been on its own for about uh, half a year, almost. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next question will be for uh, Tom, Tom Hooligan. Tom, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, and thanks very much, Lisa, for your uh, presentation. And my question is actually linked to Benjamin's. <clears throat> and I'm just thinking of such technologies, you know, that might be rolled out in different countries around Europe. And um, I, I was going to act actually ask about the, the rate of uptake, you know, so it, it's, it's obviously quite good. It's quite strong since, since it has been uh, really, since this technology has been released. And do you find it, uh, or do you think there will be a need to promote it further, or, or is this actually self promoting itself in terms of getting a very broad and high level of uptake um, across, across your country? Now, we need to promote it further and we want to promote it further and we actually just did a round of uh, promotions in uh, beginning of March and of February uh, where we made a couple of short movies and did some ads on Facebook and in newspapers and on different webs websites and we absolutely saw a spike there in, in uh, new users as well. So it's something that we're going to do uh, every so often, uh, a bit of promotion to try and reel in some new users. And do you find that generally with the forest owners that are using it, that uh, everything is very clear to them, and they can they can go into the system and um, you know and um, 
I suppose, you use this technology very easily. Um, is, is that the case? Or does would there be any feedback, say, that maybe I need a small bit of training on this to go in? Or what's the situation there? Well, we, we do have uh, several instruction videos, and we also have an online uh, course about an hour long that, that goes through all the different services and how they work. Um, so we have that av available for our users. And I'm, I'm uh, staffing the support. So I'm the one that's getting all the questions. And um, I don't think it's a lot. I think most of it, it's, uh, it's really useful. They, uh, it's often when something doesn't work. You know, we're dealing with computers. It's, it's some kind of setting or something in their computer or there's a bug in the system or that's that's when they contact us. It's not, I don't know how to use this map. How does it work? It happens, but it's not a lot. So I think we've built quite a user friendly system. Yeah, very good. And I, I, ju I just had one final question and I'm deviating a small bit from the actual technology, but you mentioned about um, back beetle, which I suppose is of interest to us in Ireland because we're, we're, we're free of bark beetle and I'm just wondering about um, the, sp the spread and we know there's been big issues around Europe. Is the, is the spread uh, of bark beetle continuing or is it is it at a lower rate or, or is there signs of hopeful signs that it's going to um, maybe lessen in terms of, of, of its vigour or, or spread rate? It's, it's, not a, it's not a direct question. Maybe Ulf, maybe you might or, or Lisa, if you want to answer it. I don't know. Do you want to, Ulf, or should I? Well, I can try. Well, <laughs> I, I think the, the situation is a little bit better than a couple of years ago because the, the big outbreak with the bark beetle damages was after the dry summer 2018. But if we have another dry summer, it, it, the, the problems will probably increase again so it's it's better very much depending on the weather yeah, and depending on which area you're in as well here here where i live we we see uh, an increased spread of bark beetles so this is considered a risk area right now because we can we've been quite spared before but now they are uh, kind of becoming more and more just here yeah. okay, okay thank you very much Okay, we don't have any more questions. I, I will just make a, a last question before we conclude the, the session, which has been really interesting. And just from the point of view of forest owners, private forest owners, that we are not experts and you're talking all about satellite data and all these things, but if a forest owner detects something to do with habitats or uh, biodiversity in their land, uh, how can they put that input in the platform or they have to do it through my pages? Or I mean, if you detect something in your land that it's interesting to know and put in the platform can you do it on yourself by yourself or you need to contact the agency or the government or how how, how do you deal with that well it, it depends on what you want to do i guess um if uh, currently now it's only possible to make notes personal notes but we're what we're building now you're able to, you'll be able to draw uh, areas with high biodiversity for instance and, and save it uh, if you want to just keep it for yourself you can definitely do will be able to do that in my pages there is no requi re requirement to report it in to the swedish forest agency uh, if you want to preserve that area and get paid for it as in as native conservation you can report uh, hand in interest send in interest through my pages uh, absolutely, but there's no require, requirement to to uh, make it formal in any way. Um, but if you want to notify, just just to be aware, I have that spe this species on my property, then you can't do it through my pages. You can just contact a person at your local office in some way. That's very interesting. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't see any more questions, so I think we are going to leave it here. It has been really, really interesting. I think that we have learned that it is a really good start and very useful, I can see. Uh, of course, as everything, it can be improved and we need to improve it slowly. 
because as we said, we need to develop in several matters like climate aspects that need to be taken into account, satellite data, of course, we need to improve artificial intelligence, which it's very challenging and but a little scary personally thinking as well. I mean, it's good for a job and thing, but in you know, another sense, you can be kind of scarce about all we are listening about this intelligent artificial intelligence, but let's get the best of it. And in general, well, we can see there's challenges there, but uh, as you said, you are getting a lot of good upset. I mean, it's well accepted, the platform, because you're having more than a 10% of forest owners. And as Benjamin said, that's a good rate for a start, because you said that you are only working in it since September. Well, I mean, the platform is on there since September 2021, so that's really, really good. And as you said, the training is not very difficult. You are there giving the services to everybody and helping with the video instructions and everything. So I think that the, the message is that it's a really good platform. Maybe we should learn. I don't know if there's someone in the audience that has some a similar experience or not in other countries. It would be interesting if someone has uh, something or not the same, but something similar that we could know about it, because I think this is the, the way to involve as well forest owners and to help, you know, to have better data and to have everything in, in co coherence and coordinated with government, forest owners, agencies, etc. So. Thank you very much to everybody. I don't know if uh, there's anyone that wants to say something else or I will just uh, wish you a very nice weekend, spring weekend. And uh, thank you very much, Lisa, for the answers and Ulf as well. And well, nice weekend to everybody and see you in the next Forest Fridays in about a couple of months.